Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, today I'm going to do uh, an autumn pattern, um, embellished watercolour and I'm going to be using this uh, etcher watercolour block which is glued all the way around, I've talked about this before but it's got uh, glue all the way around, the pages are all stuck together with the exception of one small point there where you can separate them when you're done. And the reason for this, why I've chosen this, is because I'm going to do a wet background and I don't want um, the paper to cockle while I'm doing that. First thing I'm going to do is just wet this sheet of paper um, and that's just to make the water, uh, the paint flow a bit better. So I'm going to wet that and then I've got my big palette here and I'm just going to more or less at random mix up some brownish colours. So this is the benefit of this um, type of arrangement where you can just drag different colours in. Let's have a bit of quinacridone gold in there. Just drag them in and then pop in your mixture. And this doesn't want to be too dark because it's the background and it wants to be light. And of course, because this is traditional watercolour, this isn't the Kuretake, this will um, <coughs> uh, dry quite a lot lighter than um, it appears when it first goes on. So we've got a mixture of greens and browns there, sort of sludgy background colour without the hair, if it's okay. Get the hair off, thank you. <clears throat> I was using a uh, medium Ron Ranson hake from Pro Art to, to do that. It doesn't have to be evenly spread or anything like that, just cover the paper basically with anything. Then I'm going to let that dry and I'll come back with um, a pencil and I'm going to draw in some leaf shapes and then roughly, I think probably, or I might just come in with a brush, but I'll be using the Kuretake set for that. So that's uh, this set here, these paints here, um, the reason being that they are brighter basically and I know I'm going to get a, a more striking effect if I use those as background for my gold and so on embellishment. So we'll just let that dry and uh, make a cup of tea. Okay so my background is now dry and I've decided that I'm going to use, um, I'm going to do this in, in a couple of different layers. And for the next layer, I'm going to use my uh, uh, Kuretake graphite colors. Um, this is a set and they're very subtle. And uh, there's a pinkish one, greenish, bluish, grayish, mauveish, and reddish. And um, they're very, very, very strong. So. In order to use them thinly like I want to, I'm going to have to pick up a tiny bit of paint and I've got a little dish here where I'm going to just water it down so it's nice and thin. And uh, we'll work from that. You see how strong that is? It's very, very powerful. If I just test it out on a piece of paper here, you can see that if I take it, sorry, that's the wrong one. If I take it from here, it's as dark as dark can be. So. Um, if you want a, a light background, which is what I want, you need to water it down quite a bit. So I'm going to put green in there. This is a sludgy green. If you haven't got this set, don't worry. You can mix a colour like that using black and olive green or um, sap green, any kind of green uh, will do. And uh, I'm going to mix up a bit of, uh, let me see, I think I'll go for this one which is a sort of brownish colour. And then, so I'm just going to use that to give a kind of shadowy background, these two colours. Uh, and then I'll let that dry and then I'll put the design of the leaves in some nice bright colours on top of that. 
Then on top of that, we're going to embellish it with gold and do some pen work. So my idea was just a kind of abstract uh, sort of um, a leaf design of some sort. I've got a round brush here. I only really use round brushes these days, although I've got lots of other different shapes, but this is fine. It's an all-purpose nylon brush from Drawwell. And um, I've just got this light brown on here. And I'm just going to put, I think, um, a neurographic art, you know, break the paper into sections before you start painting. So we'll just you know, make this into a kind of shadowy branch. And then we'll put some shadowy leaf shapes in both colours, so the greenish, and make sure that they're all different sizes. We don't want them the same size as each other. Um, they don't have to be in any particular place. They don't have to be particularly complete or have a particular shape. Just anything really. Just enjoy the the possibilities of putting the brush on the paper. And I think I know this Kuretake stuff doesn't dry quite as light. It does hold on to its colour a little bit better than the average Winsor and Newton or Schmincke or any of the other makes. Paul Rubens, I don't know. That's Chinese. I've just been given by by Paul Rubens, who are Chinese. I've just been given a set. But they're all wrapped up in, in little bits of paper and I'm going to have to unwrap them all before I can try them out. But they seem to be very small little um, doodars, so I don't know, I don't know how, how I'm going to feel about that because I like my, my paints to be a little bit more um, accessible than that. Anyway, we'll see. Um, I was going to say something else then and I've forgotten what. Anyway, so we're going to make a, a fairly um, good covering here of these leaves. And I've just used a, a sort of what you might call a bog standard um, leaf shape. Notice that my background, my original background was reddish brown and now I'm putting greyish green and um, sort of bluish red kind of colour on top. So that's a could say that was a contrast, couldn't you? Just put some stems in to hold these leaves in place. So there we are, that's that's great fun. I think you'll enjoy doing that. And um, so then what we need to do now is just let that dry and then we'll come in on top of it. I think I need to put a little bit of a bit more stem there. Yeah, there we are. Okay, we'll let that dry. So here's my dry background now, and I've got myself into a sort of uh, position of indecision here, so I'm not quite sure how to proceed. So um, I have made a photocopy of this, and I'm going to probably mess around and do a bit of a design on there. I'm not quite sure what to do at the moment. I've, I've made some photocopies of different leaf shapes, which I've taken from um, the internet, all sorts of different uh, autumn leaf shapes and colours and so on and so forth. And this is always a very a sensible thing to do, to have some um, reference material of different shapes that you can use as an acorn there. And somewhere here I've got some with mushrooms on uh, this. Now, you know, these are clip art things from the internet and that just gives you an idea. I'm not suggesting that you should copy them exactly, but it's amazing how when you sit down to draw an autumn leaf, you get completely stuck. I find maple leaves particularly difficult, so I'm not quite sure which ones I want to use on top of this. So I think I'm going to um, take a break and come back when I've thought it through. Okay, I'm back. So I'm going to take a pencil. I've got um, a Charisma Colour here, made in Mexico, that's interesting. Um, and I'm just going to draw um, some leaves on top of the some leaves that I've got underneath. So I've put a nice curvy line up here like that. And that's going to be the starting point. I'm just copying what I did a second ago. 
Um, down here I'm going to put something like a, a beech leaf, like that. And um, in the middle here, I'm going to take a deep breath. It's I know what it is, I realised it's the maple leaves. I find them so intimidating, I just don't know why. I think I always lose count because they've got these kind of five uh, points, haven't they? And it's just, oh my God, it's over the top. Anyway, don't be afraid of oak leaves. Here we go, here's an oak leaf. Put that one down here. A bit more familiar with those. I've lived with oaks most of my life. And then down here we'll have a little stem and we'll put some beech leaves up here. They have a, a bit of a serrated edge, don't they? Like that. They always come in nice colours. There we go, that's, that's that. And then we'll have another one coming down from the top here, a nice curve with some of these more simple leaves on, like that. And uh, I think probably, what should we have up here? See, this is where you need your reference material. Let's do one that's kind of a little bit like a heart shape there, because that would be nice. I think uh, that reminds me of um, pear, pear leaves, you know, leaves on pear trees, pear tree leaf. And um, that should be enough for now. Uh, well, there's a bit of a big gap down here. Let's put uh, one of these ones. Um, not quite sure what that is. And then once we put these in, um, we can decide whether or not we want any more filler. So now just swapping to the colours, get rid of the big one. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to, what am I going to do? I, I thought about my palette and I've got here three colours. Um, this is cadmium orange. Um, cadmium orange, you don't need to worry about most most colours that say they're cadmium orange, actually it's cadmium orange hue, which means it's not really cadmium anything, it's just a synthetic version. So um, most of the time there's nothing to worry about, it's not poisoning the environment and definitely won't poison you. Um, and then the other colour I'm going to use could be this one here, which is Indian red, um, which is a nice uh, brick red colour. And then we want some burnt sienna, the traditional burnt sienna, which is a transparent, should be anyway. I think this possibly is slightly less than transparent, being a very inexpensive brand, but it doesn't matter. That'll do. And then we want um, maroon. Maroon is um, actually not purple. In French, marron or maroon, is, is more of a brown, uh, more like chestnut brown. So there's a bit of confusion over what maroon is. I always thought it was more of a purple colour, but anyway, that's what we've got now. And I think it's possible we might need a good bright yellow for some of the backgrounds of some of the leaves, possibly. Let's see how I feel. So I'm going to put some, some of that down there and um, this way you can mix the paints then if you want to while you're using them without contaminating your little squares there. So I'll put that out of the way. And um, let's see. Let's see where we go from there. I think uh, it's possible that um, it's a good idea. I, I don't know if this is going to work or not. I don't know how this is going to work because I haven't um, used these paints on a background before, but let's see. Maybe we need to draw the line of the stem in like that. I'm not entirely sure about this paper either. This is Etcher uh, watercolour paper, but we'll see what happens. So I'm just putting in 
leaf shapes using the belly of the brush to, to give me a mixture of colour. I'll just put the stem in down here. So you could have orange near the top, pick up some maroon on top. Don't clean the brush between, you don't need to do that because there's so many mixes of colours in nature. There we are. Now this leaf down here is going to be yellowish underneath. This paper um, is interesting. I'm not going to recommend this paper and I probably won't use it again for something like this because this paper has lost its sizing. That's the sizing is the coating that you put on a paper in order to stop it from bleeding when you paint on it. And this paper has been, I've used it for a background and it has lost its sizing completely. So it's lucky for me that I'm not going to be doing anything important on this. Uh, I'm going to be embellishing all of this and it won't matter. But um, if you were going to be painting something that needed several layers and you started with a piece of this paper, at this point, you would be screaming. You can see how it's bleeding on the edges there. That's not me. So we'll see whether we can rescue this painting. We will, we will rescue it, never give up. No, we won't do that. We'll carry on regardless. It did make a very nice background. And if you were going to come in to that background with a pen and ink and uh, do something on the top of that, or if you were going to photograph it and put it on um, you know, digitize it or whatever, then that would be fine too. Print it out and use it multiple times. There's lots of ways you could use this paper, but um, I'm afraid it's not particularly good for proper watercolor. Oh well. So what I'm gonna do then, I'm going to pick up more color and uh, see what happens when I try to apply stronger colour on top. Um, so let's put some orange. Yes, well, that's interesting. So obviously when you use much more paint and much less water, you're going to get a different effect entirely. So now what I'm doing is I'm coming into the painting with thick paint. And this will give us a different result, but we'll have a result. And hoping, I'm hoping that by the time I finish these leaves, we'll have a really good background for... I'm still going to use the same colours. 
a really good background for um, some gold and stuff like that. And if it doesn't work out, then well, you never see it. I think I'm going to stick with browns. I was thinking I would introduce a little bit of um, green, but I don't think I will. This is uh, going to be one of those paintings. Now, I don't know whether it's going to respond well to this, the technique of drawing in veins. Let's see what happens. Well, I've seen better, um, but uh, there we go. So now what shall I do? This is a case of, is this going to do anything or is this going to be a disaster? Let's try my black watercolor pencil and see whether we can get something going here or not. This is a Stettler, um, uh, what is it called? I can never remember. Karat Aquarelle watercolour pencil, which has a very uh, strong tendency to melt when you touch it into water or paint. Melt in the sense of it gives up a lot of black, so it can be very effective in the right place. to reveal whether or not there is a right place for this painting.
Okay, so we've got all of the leaves now outlined. And the question is, what do we do next? Let's just dab that off, that's a bit too wet. Dab some of this off, we get a bit more texture then when you... I could do that actually, maybe I'll give that a try. This is a technique. Uh, I don't know if it will work, it probably won't because this paint is, paper is too absorbent. It might, but it might not. So you put extra water on and then you lift off. So if it's gone a bit dark and you're not very happy, you can sometimes get a more interesting result. So we can try that. Can you see that's uh, given a sort of texture to the, to the leaf? But the paper has so much lost its... See, this shouldn't happen. This is because it's like painting on blotting paper. So there's not much I can do about that, except try to sort of smush it out. And then don't know what will happen when that dries again. Okay. So we really are going to have to use this as the basis for some, some pen work, I think. So, and maybe some... Um, uh, some gold and silver. So let's see what happens when it's dry. Okay, so I've been trying out some different ways of dealing with this and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with some thick paint and I'm just going to try to do some loose strokes like that because with the paper the way it is, in order to rescue this painting, we have to take a totally different approach we have to give up on our original plan and call this experimental art. So we relax and say, don't know where this is going to go, but it's determined it's going to go there, so we better go along with it. So just loose, uh, thick paints, strokes, this is a mixture of maroon and um, uh, burnt sienna. So we're just banging that in and turn this round. I refuse to let a painting go. It might go a different way to the way I had intended, which this one certainly has. But that's the thing, you know. Sometimes you just have to give in. Say, so, all right then, you know better than me. Today is the day when we do it in this way. Your way. Okay. So I don't know if we need any more odd leaves anywhere. Maybe we'll put a pale one in here. Whatever comes to mind. Perhaps a pale one up here. Okay, and uh, do I get the feeling it needs some some uh, berries or something? I don't know, but we're not going to do anything uh, with paint that's too thin. I think somebody might be fighting out there.
Okay. That's looking a little bit more lively. Time to let it dry. We we'll come back in with something else. Take it to the next stage. So back shortly. Okay, so I think some of these um, circles need to be uh, circlified. So we'll just, uh, I was just popping them in with a big brush to start with, just to see if, uh, if it was worth it. And uh, so I've picked up a um, Poetic pen here, and I'm just going to make them a bit rounder. It's just a poetic brown of some sort. So it's a bit darker than what I've got there, so it'll be kind of like shadow. I like to do berries in groups of three or five, really, rather than anything even. Odd numbers always tend to look a bit better. But this painting's got a mind of its own, so who's to say? Okay, so that's a bit better. And we'll just put a little bit of slightly darker um, on the stems. Just strengthen that up in a few places here, perhaps. Just keep it loose. And uh, where I sort of sketched in the veins of this famous maple, we'll come in with the pen and make them a bit darker. These ones too. We can put a centre vein down the middle of these ones. And while I'm doing this, I'm pondering as to whether or not to put any, um, as I had intended at the beginning, whether to put any uh, embellishments on this. Not quite sure. Yes. Whoopsie. Pens sticking together. Now, the last time I used these poetic, I'm just trying to lift that because I think that's too dark. But the last time I used these poetic pens on different paper, I didn't have any problems getting it to lift up. But here we have an issue. And we have to cover it up with lighter paint if we're going to cover it up at all. But it uh, doesn't really matter. It's only a game. There we are, that will do. Okay, so you know what they say about spatter? If in doubt, spatter about, or something like that. Let's put some gold spatter on this here painting and see whether that does any good. Gold spatter. And uh, you could, I suppose, think about putting in some gold leaf shapes in the background. What do we think of it so far? And I'm thinking these berries could very much benefit from a little dab of gold on them because berries tend to shine, so shine away. There we go. And um, maybe we'll go for some of the platinum. We could put some smaller circles in with the 
the silvery gold. Maybe, maybe we'll take some of the white gold and do a few spatters of that. This is the fun bit, isn't it? And then maybe, I think I need a smaller brush. I'll just grab my number three. Maybe we could use the darkest gold and we could come in and put some center lines down these leaves. There we are. And uh, so this one needs it too. I think we could do quite a bit of this. I think this is very fun. So we put the center leaf, center vein in, and then some side veins like that. Just going between those nice dark splashes that the painting de demanded earlier on. And put some gold on the ends of the leaf, oak leaf. And this one needs a bit too. Can't leave anybody out once you start. So there we are. I think that's probably enough gold and silver. Pretty much. Okie dokie, there we are. One shiny thing. One shiny thing, a bit of bling. And uh, these starry colours, Kuritaki starry colours, I think everybody needs a set of those for Christmas. So now I will let you go and have a play and I'll see you again soon. So have fun everybody. Bye for now. Bye bye. <laughs>